This September, I woke early on a Friday morning to leave my house at about 5 a.m. to make the four-hour drive to Cincinnati with my surly midnight special. There I would unload my bike to ride the 326 miles of the Ohio to Erie Trail from the Ohio River in Cincinnati to Lake Erie in Cleveland. I would then ride on to my home in Huron, making the entire trip 385 miles over six days. The weather looked to be great this week, with highs in the low 70s and low 80s, with some cool nights and some rain predicted for only the third day. The plan was to spend three nights camping and two nights at hotels. I prefer camping, and although there are many options along the trail, logistics called for a hotel in Columbus and Massillon. There are links in the description to this video to many of the resources along the trail, to maps and some gear that I use. From the OTET's start in Cincinnati, through Columbus, Akron, and on to Cleveland, it takes one through 15 counties in Ohio and is made up of about 24 different trails. It is designated Ohio Bike Route 1 and U.S. Bike Route 21. Only about 10% of the trail is on roads or streets, the rest made up primarily of paved rail to trails and the gravel Cuyahoga Valley towpath trail. <laughs> I've made this journey before, but it was time to return to the trail. I made a couple bike trips earlier this year, including another ride on the Gap and an 800 mile ride circling Lake Erie. But my memory card from that latter trip became corrupted. My memory of the OTET drew me back to it though. A cross section of Ohio, well maintained, good people along the way and plenty of resources. At the beginning of the trail, one rides along the Ohio River and then through some small streets before making your way to the separated trail. Every trail has a certain feel to it, and the paved portions between the OTET in Cincinnati and Loveland seems to attract more racers and recumbent riders than I think I see elsewhere. That characteristic of the trail changes as one heads north, of course. It was nice to get the separated rail to trail portion. To go through small towns by the trail, across the rivers, through the trees, hear the insects, the birds, see the grasshoppers along the trail. There was one short detour, and like all detours that I've ever known, it required a ride up a steep hill. At first I thought the detour was sending me along a busy road with no shoulder, but I soon spotted to the left a separated trail and headed over to it. The website for the OTET 
ohiotoerietrail.org has GPS coordinates for the trail available for download and the resources contained accurate maps and information for the detours I did face this trip. It was a great resource. This first day of the ride was not a quick day, but it was a smooth day and the conditions were perfect and the people were friendly. In addition to a new tent that I would be trying this trip, I had a new front bag from Bags by Bird. It's really a great bag. Plenty of space, it was adjustable, and was easy to take on and off the bike. Of the riders I saw on the trail, there were several that seemed to be touring the whole trail, which was good to see. It's nice to come to Xenia. It's an amazing city full of bike paths throughout, which I used on my way to the free camping spot at the Old Town Reserve. To camp there, one only needs to contact the county. It's got a porta potty and running water, nice space to use. I stopped at a gas station shortly before camp for some supplies. There was no one at the Old Town Reserve. People just used the parking lot to access the trail. At camp, I set up my new tent, a Big Agnes Tiger Wall. It proved to be roomy, light, and it served me well this week. On the second day, I packed up to get ready for a 60-mile ride from Xenia to Columbus. The high was to be 73 and only 5 mile per hour east winds. I woke up to a campsite wet from dew. On the cool morning, I rode into Xenia to get some breakfast at the One Beast. Several riders were already on the road. I was glad I did stop. Their coffee was amazing. There's so many different ways to make coffee at camp. There's pour overs, an AeroPress, instant coffees. But for better coffee and for less weight, I've come to use no, okay. a little patience to wait for 
a diner or a coffee shop in the morning to get my cup of joe. This also gives me a reason to explore more of the areas and the people. This breakfast this morning was good. The trail that day would prove to be flat and smooth and well cared for, like most of the OTET. And I couldn't ask for better weather. It made the riding more enjoyable. Both the birds and the crickets were chirping this day. Not only is the trail well maintained, but there's several nice spots to stop along the trail with old depots, old rail cars, benches, water, everything you need really. Sincerely performed well, shifted when I needed it to. No mechanicals, no flats, no issues of any kind. In South Charleston, I stopped by an old depot and train cars for a moment's rest, as many other people had done as well. One then rides briefly through the city before returning to the trail again. In London, there's a primitive campground for riders to use. I stopped by to fill my water while a mother and her young child had a picnic at a nearby table. The site was nice, with both water and restrooms nearby. I looked at my itinerary to see if I might plan to use this on a future ride. It's amazing that so many of these smaller trails can be so cohesive to provide such a great experience all the way from Cincinnati up to Cleveland. At the Big Derby Creek, one gets onto a little bit of gravel, just for a little bit. There's some nice woods though, plenty of people out walking.
one can sense the population increase as one gets closer to Columbus. More people, more cars, more concrete. The sites do change as you get closer to Columbus. There's many bridges to ride under. There's many bridges to cross over, too. It breaks things up, which is nice. And it provides good views. I would end up staying at the Red Roof Inn this night, which is right on the trail in Columbus. But I can't say I'm gonna stay there again. It is convenient, shower is great, as is a bed. It's a little frustrating that they didn't have any detergent to sell to use their washer for clothes. They didn't have any coffee available. And the lobby had a strong odor of cologne and dollar store perfume. There's a very good restaurant in the same parking lot, though, which I used. After the second day, I was still feeling good. Nothing else, it's nice not to have to pack and unpack a tent and sleeping bag at the end of the day. On the third day of this journey along the OTET, I would ride about 63 miles from Columbus to the Cocosine Valley campground in Howard. The weather is to be perfect again with a high of 73 and five mile per hour east winds. The morning, like most mornings along this trip, was a bit chilly. And on this day, the roads and trails were still wet from rain earlier. In the past, I found the trail out of Columbus to be littered with broken glass and trash. But I was pleased to see that wasn't an issue this time. It was clean and the surface was resealed, if not newly paved. The Alum Creek Trail, north of Columbus, is just a joy. Curving through the woods with so many scenic bridges, the people were friendly with greetings and with information about being able to walk around a closed bridge I would eventually find. Bridges break up the ride. This is that detoured bridge, but it was easy enough to walk around it.
This morning I found my coffee and breakfast at a Waffle House. It was hectic, busy, and loud, but entertaining, friendly, and tasty. Reminds me of when I used to work in a restaurant so many years ago. The Alum Creek Trail, Hoover Scenic Trail, Sendell Trail, and Heart of Ohio Trail and Covacine Gap Trails were to make up my ride today. It was all smooth riding. I found this little park behind the sign in Genoa to be interesting. What a great resource. Even when there were areas off the trail itself on some roads, the traffic was light, not a problem at all. The weather so far this week was just a great relief from the 80s and 90s I often ride through. Not only was it a relief not to be soaking from sweat and have to be so careful with finding water to prevent dehydration, it was just easier on my aging body. This aerial foundation park is just such an interesting place along the trail. Let's stop by and explore. Ruins, really. I stopped at Mount Vernon to resupply a bit. There's an old depot there with picnic tables to take a break at. There's also a great bridge that goes over the Cocosine River. But don't make the same mistake I've made in just about every past trip by going over the bridge. The OTET cuts to the right just before it. Having reached the Cocosine River and Cocosine Gap Trail, I knew I was getting closer to my campground for the night. Toward the end of this day, I cut away from the OTET to ride along country roads into the Cocosine Valley campground. 
these country roads sometimes provide a better variety of scenery than the trails themselves. Nice to be greeted by okay. the owner and, and his dog and later as well. <laughs> I really enjoy this campground. It's clean, it's friendly, it's inexpensive. I slept better for a fraction of what I paid for a hotel the previous night. On the fourth day, I would ride 68 miles from Howard to Massillon. Through some northwest winds and a high of 67. I woke up slower this day, took my time to make some coffee and a small breakfast at camp, cleaned up, wiped off some of the dew, packed and headed out. This started with a couple steep hills on country roads to get back to the trail. Scenic does not adequately describe how beautiful this section of the trail is. The trails joined to form this leg of the trip would be the Cocosing Gap Trail, the Mohican Valley Trail, the Holmes County Trail, and the Sippo Valley Trail. These trails are used by cyclists, walkers, and obviously some horse and buggies who leave their droppings behind. Just have to be careful to wash off your water bottles real good before you use them. Between the Bridge of Dreams and Glenmont, there is a very long, gradual uphill, followed by a very smooth downhill into Glenmont. During this part of the ride, a bee hit my shin and stung me, something both of us would have preferred hadn't happened. As I started to see more Amish, it was neat to see many of them were riding e-bikes. There were two that yo-yoed in front of me much of this day. I like to stop and kill Buck. 
Get some water at the gas station. I also caught up with the two Amish people at the Killbrook Sweet Shop, just as they were leaving it. I was happy to have a good sandwich and let them take their lead. This day of the ride does have more sections on roads. They're short on traffic, but they have plenty of rolling hills too. It sure felt like I was gonna get some rain, but it was just a sprinkle at most. be along roads, but again, the roads provide some of the best scenery, I think. Dalton was a indication that I was getting close to Massillon to finish the day. Whether paved or gravel, the entire OTET is easy to ride on. It's certainly do with a road bike, even through the gravel sections. I would stay at the Hampton Inn in Maslon, which made up for the poor hotel stay in Columbus. It was clean, friendly, had good coffee. It was within walking distance of stores and restaurants. Really a nice hotel. And obviously it's bike friendly as well. No problems bringing your bike to your room. I chose to have dinner at Menchie's Brothers, which claims to have invented the hamburger at an 1885 county fair as well as the waffle cone.
The fifth day of my ride would be a shorter one of only about 44 miles from Massillon into Peninsula. There was to be a high of 67, partly sunny, west winds of only five to 10 miles per hour. On this day, the nature of the trail changes from the paved rail to trails primarily to gravel towpath trails along the canal. I started the day with my coffee and breakfast at the hotel before getting out and onto the gravel. It's a hard packed gravel and better than some of the paved surfaces I had been on earlier days. Surprisingly, I had another bee sting me this day. There's an old lock from the canal. One can stop and view, relax at. Canal Fulton is a touristy area with plenty of resources, a good ice cream place. Here's another lock. I enjoy seeing the homes and cities make good use of the canal coming into Barberton and Akron. I've heard some people voice concerns about safety during these sections of the trail, especially in Akron. I've not experienced any such concerns. Rather, these sections are some of my favorite, traveling over and under bridges along the canal and through parks. Being a more populated area, I was surprised to see so few people taking advantage of the trail as a resource. It may have just been the time of day or day of the week though. Hey buddy. Going north of Akron, there's a fairly decent amount of downhill. Pick up a little speed, or at least make it easier for you.
This yapping dog yapped his entire walk. I had stopped and then caught up with him later to hear him continuing. Into the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, I think there are more people who use the trail less often, a little bit less familiar with trail etiquette, such as moving over, or using the left-hand side. In Peninsula, I stopped at the Winged Lizard for dinner before wrapping up the day at the Heritage Farms campground. Heritage Farms is a hip camp Christmas tree farm, and it's a great spot to stay. You can choose to have sites with shelters. The owners are extremely friendly. And to me, looking over the Christmas trees feels like looking over a vineyard. There were also some families staying this time. I don't often see many of them. They had active young children having fun. campfire was mesmerizing and a truly relaxing way to end the day. The final day of my ride would be about 77 miles, including about 28 miles to Edgewater Park to finish the OTET, and then about 49 miles to finish my ride to my home in Huron. It was a bit cool when I woke. Having chosen to use the shelter without setting up a tent made packing easier. I took time to have some coffee and a granola breakfast before heading out. I felt surprisingly refreshed, almost as well as I felt on the first day of this trip. I was hoping the feeling would carry me through the end of the day. I winded through the towpath into the city. The high of 74 with variable winds made for another wonderful day of riding. The day would start with the gravel of the towpath and then wind in through what I think are a series of small trails to get to Edgewater Park. view there are some nice bridges for the cyclists and walkers to get it over top of the busier roads. They provide a good climb up but a nice descent down.
trails into Cleveland are fantastic. I also like that it gives you a view of some of the industry of the area. As somebody who works very near Cleveland, you hardly know that those trails are there unless you look for them. There's a bit of time one's on the streets or near the streets on West 25th in Cleveland but it quickly returns to a separated trail to get to Edgewater Park. It's great to come into Edgewater, and Edgewater makes a great ending to the trip if this is where you choose to end it at. It has beaches, a wonderful view, a view of Cleveland. After Edgewater, my ride would take me along Route 6, following the coast of Lake Erie. Much of the way either has bike lanes or wide shoulders, except for Rocky River and Vermilion. It's good to be along the lake. There are many parks along this route, along the lake, providing areas to rest, refill water, enjoy the views. I have a Garmin rear radar and light, which I have to say makes me feel quite a bit safer when riding along the roads. It's nice to have the additional notification when cars are approaching. The OTET is an amazing trail system and this ride went as well as one could possibly hope. It was great weather, there were no storms, no accidents, no flats, no mechanical issues, and no injuries other than a couple bee stings. It almost made the ride feel too easy. My bike trips give me something to look forward to, a break in the routine, a break from work, and an incentive to be a little bit more healthy. It's an amazing opportunity to take such a journey, thanks to so many who worked to put this trail system together and maintain it. If you're thinking about riding the OTET and haven't, I hope you start making your plans to ride it soon too.
This was another amazing journey along the OTET. So it was good to get home in Huron and see my dog had been missing me a bit. <laughs>